Uh, resuming debate, the Honourable uh, Member for Courtney Alberni. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's a, it's a great honour to be here to rise today to speak on behalf of the NDP motion and that the House recognize the contradiction of continuing to give Canadian criminal records for simple possession of marijuana after the government has stated that it should not be a crime and recognize that this situation is unacceptable to Canadians, municipalities and law enforcement agencies and recognize that a growing number of voices, including that of a former Liberal Prime Minister, are calling for decriminalization to address this gap and a call upon the government to immediately decriminalize the simple possession of marijuana for personal use. Um, this, this discussion has been going on for a very, very long time. Uh, we look back to the Ladane Commission uh, in 1969. Uh, in 1971, the NTP introduced a bill to decriminalize marijuana possession after the Liberals ignored the recommendations of the Ladane Commission report. In 1993, again, uh, NDP MP Jim Fulton introduced a bill to legalize marijuana in Canada, and the Liberal government voted, again, voted it down as well. So um, there's been plenty of opportunity for the Liberals to address this issue. Uh, just in 2009, uh, the NDP voted against a Conservative bill with mandatory minimum sentences for marijuana, and the Liberal Party voted in support of it. Um, the NDP has used uh, every tactic possible to, to stop or delay the Conservative omnibus bill, which included mandatory sentences for marijuana, and the Liberals were nowhere to be found. Um, in, in my community and, and where I live uh, on the West Coast in Courtney, Alberni, there's been a lot of confusion. Uh, in, in Port Alberni, since, uh, since the election and since the Prime Minister was sworn in last November, uh, as he, he was elected in part on a promise to legalize marijuana, he stated, we will legalize, regulate and restrict access to marijuana, reads the platform of the Liberal Party of Canada, though no details were given about what speed this legislation might occur. But what happened in Port Alberni is seven medical marijuana dispensaries opened uh, since, since the election, and there was none before. Uh, the RCMP in Port Alberni has decided not to take uh, action or prosecute uh, 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 or to enforce uh, against uh, those selling marijuana uh, at their dispensaries. But in Oceanside, which is a 35-minute drive away, the same force, the RCMP, has decided to enforce. Uh, and in Courtney, the same, So, which is only an hour north of Port Alberni. All RCMP det detachments, all different commanders for their detachments. So it's extremely confusing. And and really, it's becoming a huge problem on local governments as they try to figure out how this works uh, and where, where they come in in terms of legislation. So in Port Alberni, it, it fell on local mayor and council. And, and, uh, and I'll read from the Alberni Valley News. It says, but while the federal government works on delivering its platform promise, municipalities are left to grapple with dispensaries popping up in their storefronts. And given this is a federal issue, there doesn't seem much that municipalities can do. Currently selling marijuana, whether medical or recreational, is illegal under Canadian law, said Port Alberni RCMP Inspector Mark Richards. Despite this, the City of Port Alberni voted to regulate medical marijuana dispensaries at its January 25th meeting. It wasn't a unanimous decision. Throughout the three months that City Council debated the issue, it was split. And Mayor Rutan said he added that he believed it was unfair for the federal government to have downloaded it onto municipalities as problem, here, here. but that he was committed to upholding his council's decision. But it doesn't matter. This is what council has voted for, he said, and I believe that council's position is fairly clear. Is this council's best attempt to control the uncontrollable? And this was shared by other council members. It shouldn't be on the municipal agenda, but it is a problem in our community. If we wait, it, it will probably just get worse and worse and worse by the time the federal government does something about it. So this is, this is uh, just some of the quotes and, and some of the stories that are happening in my community. Here you've got a local government that has been downloaded a problem. You've got people in the community that don't even understand whether marijuana is legal or not. And again, uh, in a riding the size of Courtney Alberni where two-thirds of the riding are, it's being enforced, and one third of the writing, it's not being enforced. I got an email from someone, uh, John from Courtney, he says, there have been lots of raids and arrests of marijuana dispensaries of late. 
Given that this Liberal government will be legalizing in the near future, I have to wonder why this is happening. If you have any ideas on this matter, I would love to hear them. If there is a way you could remind the government, that would be great. So, John, I, I'm doing that right now, I'm making sure that the government's being reminded. Um, an, another email from, this is from Corey Powell, he's a registered physiotherapist in, in Qualicum Beach, and he says, well, not being a recreational user myself, I'm a member of the millennial generation, so I grew up around it, and I have a contemporary view of marijuana professionally in its application in health and also in today's culture. So he says, my suggestions come from a concern for our generation and the damage criminalization, criminalizing some of their recreational activity is done. So he's got lots of concerns about, you know, the fairness side of things. So I think, I think we realize that the government was elected on a mandate to, to uh, reform Canada's marijuana laws. Right now, the, the, the confusion is, is enormous. Uh, it's been left on the, on the backs of local governments, of local police force, local RCMP detachments to try to figure it out. We've got uh, concerns from business uh, owners that are supplying uh, uh, patients that need access to marijuana. We don't know where supply is coming for a lot of dispensaries, so there's confusion there. Um, we we want to make sure that, uh, that we, uh, we, have the, we, we use our resources when it comes to the criminal justice system for, for things that, are, that matter, for, for things that matter, and we want to make sure we use our resources to, to protect the vulnerable and make sure that we, we give people the resources to be able to avoid some of uh, their choices that might harm them. And I, I feel it's actually very, very wasteful that uh, we're spending time prosecuting people that uh, may, might affect their, their potential employment, that might affect uh, their ability to travel in the future, when we know that the government has, has made a commitment that in a year down the road or so it's going to be, uh, it's going to be legal. So why wouldn't we uh, make that decision now? Why wouldn't the government and the Justice Minister make a directive to the courts to, to stop enforcing uh, 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 the, law, the marijuana laws of today, to stop prosecuting people in courts, stop chasing uh, young adults and, and people uh, 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 that maybe could make better choices if we took a harm reduction approach. And uh, we, we know the government was elected on a, a willingness to change. Um, we want to get it right. We, we know that harm reduction approaches have been taken in countries like Portugal, uh, countries around the world. The NDP has laid out a very thoughtful, a very respectful plan on how to move forward with reforming Canada's uh, marijuana laws. And uh, right now, my, my big concern is the government made a promise. They had no plan. It, it, it feels like it was made on the back of a paper napkin. Um, there's been no action, and it's very unclear and creating a very messy situation. And, and really, we, we need a decision. And when we talk to people in British Columbia, uh, uh, iPolitics actually just did a, 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 uh, a survey, and it said that uh, Possession of small amounts of marijuana for personal use should not be a crime. And 73% of British Columbians agreed with that, and 16% of British Columbians didn't agree with that. Well, I wonder why, uh, you know, people have, uh, after what they've seen, when they look at our history and the failure of the approach of previous governments in taking this issue on, when they see the mess that's being created today, uh, people don't have to look far. They can walk down the main street of Port Alberni. They can walk down the main street of many communities and they can see that uh, deregulation, um, I, I mean, uh, the lack of, the lack of uh, uh, leadership on this issue is clear. In, uh, it's creating a grey area and it's not doing what the government set out to do and that's to protect young people and the vulnerable. So, uh, Mr. Speaker, I, I call on this government to, to, uh, to support our motion, to support decriminalizing marijuana, to support using our resources for what we, we need them to do. And that's uh, take, a, take a more positive, progressive approach and follow through with their promise, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Scarborough Southwest. Thank, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I just wanted to, to, to ask a point of clarification. Um, the, the member opposite, and I thank him for, for his remarks, uh, but he gave some indication that, that it's on the backs of the RCMP, this, this confusion he alleges exists, so notwithstanding that, quite frankly, on this side of the House, I don't think we could possibly be any clearer that the law remains in effect, it should be obeyed, it should be upheld, and it should be enforced. But at, at, but at the Public Safety Committee, 
um, about a month and a half ago, the RCMP commissioner appeared before that committee, and at that time, he made it very clear, and he stated that the confusion around the enforcement of marijuana laws should not be overstated. And in light of those remarks and that clarification coming from him, I wonder if, if the member opposite wanted to clarify his remarks. The Honourable Member for Courtney Alberni. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And, and, and I want to thank the member for, for the question. Um, I, I, again, there's so much confusion. I mean, here uh, it's a perfect example that the RCMP commissioner himself is saying that, uh, that they're, they're, they're going to enforce the law, and then two detachments of, three in my, of, the, of the four in my riding are enforcing it, and two aren't. And so uh, it's very confusing on the ground about where they're going. And, and I find it actually really disgraceful that, that they're even pursuing, continuing to charge people when we know in a year it's going to be legal according to the government promises. So why would the government be charging people today for something we know is going to be legal in a year? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to anyone in my community. And I think you'd be hard pressed to, to sell that on the streets of Port Alberni, Oceanside, or Courtney, or anyone in Courtney, Alberni. Here, here. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Sherwood Park, Fort Saskatchewan. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. It's been interesting for me to hear members of the NDP as well as of the government talk a lot about other jurisdictions, and yet when I asked the Parliamentary Secretary if he could name a single jurisdiction where decriminalization or legalization led to a decrease in use, he wasn't able to name that jurisdiction. So I wonder if the NDP, given that they're advocating this course, can do better, because all the evidence I've read suggests that for better or worse, there is an increase in use when you make the laws more permissive, and that's only logical. I do want to ask him as well, uh, with respect to the Conservative position, because some members have said that we support decriminalization, which we certainly do not, we, we instead passed a motion, and I supported it, to have a ticketing option, to continue to have marijuana be a criminal offence, but to allow police to use a ticketing option. I would consider that a middle way that allows for effective enforcement in a range of different kinds of situations. So I would like to know, in addition to this question about jurisdictions, if the member has thoughts on that as an option uh, for addressing the situation we face, but also continuing to have that uh, strong, um, strong sense that the marijuana really is associated with significant health problems. The Honourable Member for Courtney Alberni. Well, for, first, I'd like to, to, to thank the member for, uh, for putting forward some, some ideas on how we can move forward to talk a little bit about the past. And when we look at the past, uh, and, and we talk about previous governments, a Conservative government, it, it didn't work. I mean, it clearly, uh, we didn't see uh, uh, that approach uh, reduce marijuana use. When we look around the world, I will cite some examples. Uh, Portugal is a country where they brought in uh, decriminalization, they brought in a, a more progressive approach, and actually marijuana was reduced. They, they invested their resources in, uh, in harm reduction strategies and, and uh, education and ensuring that uh, especially young people uh, had the support that they needed. And, and when it comes to ticketing and uh, how we move forward, um, uh, again, I, I really appreciate the, the member bringing forward ideas, but I think the NDP has been very clear. Decriminalize first so that people aren't being criminally charged and then establish that independent commission with a broad mandate to include health and public health to consult Canadians in all aspects of the non-medicinal use of marijuana to provide guidance to Parliament on the institution of an appropriate regulatory regime to govern such use. So lots of options to be looked at as we move forward, but starting first with decriminalization so that people aren't uh, uh, getting a criminal record that might prohibit them from getting a job or their ability to travel. It's, uh, it's certainly not an approach that's worked uh, in Canada, hasn't worked around the world, the current laws, uh, the way they are today. And uh, we have models around the world where it has worked. So thank you to the member. Reprise du débat, l'honorable 